Uh, thank you for uh, Dr. Uh, to Dr. Nicole Bayer for agreeing to um, to to chair this session. Uh, Nicole is a senior lecturer in French studies at the University of Leicester, and in particular, she was um, well. She does so many things; it's hard to present everything now. But she was the creator and main creator of speaking out uh, women healing from the trauma of violence, uh, a contemporary art exhibition that was held at Embrace Art. Um, in Leicester. But I just wanted to mention that um, that Nicole is not here today um, representing the University of Leicester because we are all in support of the national boycott um, against the University of Leicester for the wave of unfair redundancies that are happening there. Um, so we support the boycott and therefore Nicole is here as a um, gender and sexuality research cluster uh, long term member. Nicole, over to you. Thank you very much. Just, just you know, a couple of words about the the boycott. Um, if you, just in case, some of you um, uh, are involved in partnerships with Leicester or are invited to Leicester, uh, the boycott uh, has to do with not working at the University of Leicester, not coming into the University of Leicester, but um, uh, it doesn't necessarily involve um, not in, you know, if, if you've got invitations if you've invited someone from the university uh, to come and present at your university, it's, it's not, what I'm trying to say, is that it's not about punishing individuals, it's about punishing the university. So what we're doing is that uh, if you've been inviting to pre invited to present at Leicester, then this is about not going into Leicester, resigning as externals and that kind of thing. Um, but it's not about, you know, punishing uh, individuals. We don't want to harm people's, uh, people's career. Okay, so uh, thank you very much, um, uh, Marion, uh, for this introduction. And um, uh, so this is the second day of the, this absolutely wonderful conference. And we're delighted today to welcome uh, Dr. Barbara uh, Biglia from the University of Rovira Evangeli and Dr. Itya Gandarias, um, I'm really, I'm really sorry, Itya. Um, uh, go, Katya, <laughs> that's as far as I'm going to, to, to go. Uh, so you've already gauged that I don't have any Spanish at all. Uh, from the Universitat de Dutz, <laughs> it gets worse, <laughs> okay, as you can see. Uh, so, um, so Barbara Biglia has a, a PhD in psychology um, and she's Sarah Hunter Associate Professor at the Department of Pedagogy at the University Rovira e Virgili. She's member of the uh, group GREDI and coordinator of SINREF, which is a group that explores feminist strategies for the production of knowledge for the transformation of academia and society. Her research has focused on um, a range of themes that include sexual and gender-based violence, um, processes of gender construction and production, and feminist epistemology. She also works on research methodology, the influence on gender roles in processes of identity construction, virtual teaching and cyber feminist pedagogy and the analysis of feminist uh, uh, policy. And currently she's the PI for the Sigrev Uni project, uh, uh, which is entitled Visibility and Measuring the Scale and Scope of Sexual and Gender Related Violence in Universities. And Barbara works in combination with Itzia, who's a, uh, also a doctor of social psychology uh, at Barcelona. She teaches in the Faculty of Psychology and Education and also on the Master of Psychology of Social Interventions. And she teaches on feminist methodology and gender and social interventions. She researches on the theory and practice of intersectionality, feminist and participatory methodology of gender and gender perspective in social intervention. And at the moment, she's coordinating research projects with social uh, entities to incorporate feminist perspective in social intervention and the analysis of multiple violence and undercover homelessness of women and participate also uh, in uh, Segrev Uni. 
So all of these are absolutely crucial areas uh, in order uh, for society to be able to progress a little bit. And today, uh, Barbara is going to uh, tell us about uh, the current uh, project that um, Barbara and Itia are involved in, along with another two academics from Madrid and Barcelona. Uh, uh, the title of which is Same Roads, Different Experience, Visibilizing and Measuring Intersexual Effects on Gender-Related Violence Within the Neoliberal University. And any interventions, you, any comments you might have during the paper, please post them in the chat. Any questions you, you wish to ask, please post them in the Q&A. Okay, over to you, Barbara. Thank you very much for this uh, kind uh, introduction, Nicole. Um, please uh, apologize for my English. And uh, if anything is not clear, you can stop me during the presentation too. So if I don't see that someone said, what are you saying, <laughs> please tell me. And I try to rephrase, okay? Actually, uh, I want to, to hear is all, are all the author of, the, of this presentation, but uh, we, I want to mention that there is a lot of people in the, in the project, it's not just the four of us, and that uh, we are spread in different uh, contexts, so basically it's here, Luigochea is not a, a Spanish <laughs> surname, but it's a Basque one. So we have Basque people, uh, Catalan people, people from Madrid is, is, a, is a very broad group, okay? So uh, thank you very much for being here and for, sorry, and for, for letting us present and share with you in this interesting conference. I will try to introduce, oh, let's see if I'm here, okay. Uh, in the presentation, I will uh, move a little bit from the specificity of the project uh, to how does the uh, neoliberalism in the university influence the gender-related violence, okay? Uh, in this sense, uh, I think it's, uh, it's interesting to remember, as I'm sure Nicole uh, <laughs> know a lot for her uh, activism also, how does the, the elephant in the sexual and gender-related violence in the university are still the elephant in the room, okay? In uh, the protest against uh, sexual violence, uh, we know that started many years ago, already in the 17th of the last century, we have a forced uh, group uh, in Berkeley, at least the first one recognized. It didn't mean that there were not other activists before, but the first one that we can trace or that we were able to trace were in the 17th in Berkeley. Uh, and uh, in the 19th, especially in the USA, there was a a beginning of institutional disclosure of some statistic and some kind of force acknowledgement of this reality. But it was in the last uh, few years that uh, the problems uh, start to reach uh, a more uh, social recognition. And for example, here I put an example of 2013 protest uh, of uh, Emma Su. Su Sulkovic, uh, now with the surname, you know, <laughs> again, a USA student that uh, uh, was uh, really pissed off by the fact that a rapist uh, uh, get along uh, without any punishments uh, uh, from the university, okay? And this this is one of the uh, er artist uh, artistic protest uh, become quite famous in the world and is one of it, it's in this period in which uh, there is more conscious uh, on this problem um so one of the main uh, uh, aim of our uh, project is to give visibility to this the complexities and nuance of sexual and gender relation violence in the university because we didn't believe that there is just a way of living them and that uh, we have not to fall again in this uh, uh, homogenizing aspect of of uh, of violence okay so our objective are the reconceptualization of uh, of the concept itself from an intersectional and feminist perspective but also uh, the idea is to create a survey that uh, can be able to visibilize uh, this, uh, uh, this problem from 
this feminist uh, intersectional perspective. So in order to do so, we are uh, in the second year on, uh, on our uh, research and we are trying to make it uh, to create the survive through a collective process. Uh, so in order, our definition of gender-related violence, we don't speak about, we don't use the expression gender-based violence, but we want to refer we, we, we use this wider definition that in Spain we use with a plural and that's why I also put the S on violence in English even if every English editor take me off the S and say no violence is singular and say no violence is plural. <laughs> so I know it's in grammatically incorrect but the idea is uh, to take off the responsibility of violence or to reduce the uh, not to limit the responsibility of violence uh, in subject, but to understand how does a culture, institution uh, are also uh, producing gender-related violence uh, and uh, to recognize the social implication and the, the communitary implication in the production uh, of violence, okay? So we want to take off the focus from the subject that in, oh, sorry, uh, that intervene, not interview <laughs> in the process uh, to the structure of oppression. Uh, so why, why and now scaling? Because uh, uh, nowadays data are strongly, still have a very, very strong importance in, uh, in the fact that from policy actors, uh, uh, phenomenon are recognized, but, uh, but this data are still reproduced from some people, some specific people, and uh, they are generally produced in a scientific uh, uh, heteropatriarchal points, starting points, okay? So that's why uh, we want to create an indicator that are not created from a, a theoretical expert, but uh, also to include uh, not theoretical expert, but uh, vivential expert in the construction of what does violence is in order to be detected. Okay, so uh, some of the hidden uh, within this uh, elephant in the room problem, there is also groups that are even more hidden. At least in uh, I'm, uh, now we are talking about the. The Spanish state context uh, and here it's really huge the fact that uh, uh, mm, for example rationalized people do not report sexual and generated violence in the university and uh, also people that uh, are, are, have any disability uh, do not report it. So this is a fact that we have Mm, this, we have analyzed it through the interview of uh, people that is in this uh, service providers uh, uh, for survivors. Okay, so uh, that's why we, after looking at the at the uh, literature, we discover different groups that have, we consider it not to be in. Uh, uh, given voices, uh, not given voices, listened enough <laughs> in order to understand uh, uh, how they live this experience. Uh, some of them are uh, people uh, with a disability or uh, different able people. Sorry, sometimes English is difficult for <laughs> not reproducing discrimination. Racialized people, but also precarious people. For example, in university, people that cleaner. Uh, that we we don't we know very very few about how does a cleaner in the university experience the gender related violence. They are not considered full member of the university, and that's a, a huge problem. So we are trying to uh, create our understanding uh, through these uh, these uh, the listening the voices of these people and. Uh, I have to admit that it's really difficult and with the pandemic have been even more difficult, especially with the precarious people, with the most, with the externalized people, not precarious teacher that we can contact that, but for example, cleaner or people that service in the canteen are, are, have been really difficult to reach. 
Um, so some example of, uh, we have many example of uh, how does people feel that their uh, experience have been shaped through, their students of Balian have been shaped through uh, intersectional lens. For example, uh, the very, very low sensibility uh, in respect to what is uh, uh, to what is violent or offensive uh, according with uh, uh, cognitive diversity, okay? So we don't have the same uh, uh, policy of uh, being careful uh, and that the language is extremely, extremely discriminated still in the university. Um, also, people from a Muslim background that say that uh, the, the use of the veil make them much more uh, often object of uh, Islamophobia than uh, to their uh, male peer. Okay. In other people remember how does uh, being a lesbian and from Latin America uh, it have created uh, uh, many violence to some uh, students coming from uh, from abroad, some visitor, or a part-time teacher uh, express out as a, both students and the academics and uh, and the administrative were uh, framing her for being a Latin American and foreigner uh, teacher in, uh, in a Spanish uh, context. So how all this violence uh, happened differently, these are just few examples we have collected. And uh, in order to do so, uh, so how does the, all this uh, frame happen, intersect with the, the, the neoliberally, uh, the liberal system in the university, okay? Um, we believe that uh, uh, university are institution that reproduce, reproduce uh, the macro system problem. So we are an heteropatriarchal society. So university is heteropatriarchal. There is no other way to see it, okay? Um, and uh, is not this, uh, and also one of the problem is that sometimes is believed that being a, a educative space, there is this uh, assumption that it should be a safe space. Okay, but it's not at all is uh, as heteropatriarchal and as violent as any other places. But there are also some specificity that, that we have to take in account when we, talk, when we think about uh, uh, gender related violence. For example, this is a place where the hierarchy is extremely strong. Uh, is a, a place that is going to the uh, importance of effectiveness, efficiency, and market over the life of the subject. At least here in the, in the South, we have a, a strange combination of neoliberalism and the feudal and so familiar system. So uh, at the same times that you are in a free market and you have to prove your value with a lot of publication, you have to being uh, uh, um, stay behind your uh, boss. That is the only one that make be you able to think that in the future you may reach a position. Okay, cooperative defense is also extremely strong. Uh, has and the bureaucratization have a strong effect too. So let's let's see some of them how we uh, affect. And uh, one of the big problems uh, in this sense, and this sense, when we talk about power relation, obviously precarization in the university is one of the strong problems. Here I have put uh, a, a figure of a research car career in a path in Spain in a gallons. Okay, you can see that in order to have a tenure position after your master, you need at least seventy here. So if you are really lucky when you are 40 you can have a stable position obviously this creates a strong dependence from uh, who is uh, your boss okay so there is this boat this is uh, this double trick that uh, we are in a very individualizing uh, uh, context uh, in which you have to be the special one in which knowledge seems to be created uh, individually instead of collectively. 
um, you have to prove that you can publish more than other, that the, all your ideas are only your, from yourself and that you are not learning from other because otherwise, uh, yeah, including sometimes they, they put you in question uh, if you, for example, at least in your, if you make your PhD within a recognized research, sometimes they say, oh, but we are not sure if uh, it's really your knowledge of is the collective one. Is that possible to produce knowledge <laughs> in isolation? <laughs> it's not that science should be really the cooperation between people, but that's, so there is this, you have to be this strong person, but at the same time, you have to prove your devotion to your boss so to prove and to be dependent on your boss to be to publish with his name or their name to be so this create a very 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 feeling of isolation and uh, uh, dependency that uh, has we all people that work in, in gender violence know that this is the base of gender related violence so uh, the other specificity is related with uh, power and, uh, and charisma. All studies on uh, work, workplace bullying show that uh, uh, violence is uh, less frequent between employees of the same grade. But at the same time, this is not again completely equal. For example, female manager tend to experiment more frequently workplace building than a male colleagues, okay? Oh, okay. Ah, I cannot go back. Okay, but uh, um, at the same time, um, oh, sorry, it's not, no, it didn't let me go back. Um, and, and, this, uh, and this power in, in the university is also related with the idea of charisma, okay? So that uh, people with, uh, with this halo of, especially men that are with this halo of being the nowhere. I am the nowhere, I am so good. And also if I am progressive even more, look at me. <laughs> and so this created a very strange situation in which you are not sure if it's really a violence, uh, if it's, uh, something is a compliment that they, is given to you, you have to be happy to, be in com uh, to receive this compliment. Okay. In this context also, also uh, we can say that uh, the quality discourse can be a, a moral violence. Uh, and that we are in, in our university, the meritocracy uh, is hiding desigualty a lot. And uh, why it can be a violence as suggested by Elena Casado, because they are selling, telling to us that uh, if, we can, if we are not being so good as harder, it's our fault. Because the university is equal. There is no this discrimination. So it's my fault. And that is particularly strong in a uh, neoliberal context. Right? where uh, there is a strong psychologization of well-being and the now in our context also in our, in our epoca this uh, importance that is given to resilience okay we all have to be resilient you have to be able to manage everything if you leave a violence it's your problem that you are not able to uh, solve the conflict. So the university and the institution in general, what they are doing is using resilience as a way of government. In the, and they are saying to us, okay, obviously there is some problem in the system. That's uh, a mistake can happen. Okay. But because uh, we have this problem, but we, have, we are not responsible for solving it. So you have to be the resilient one. You have to solve it. And at, at maximum, I can help you giving you a psychologist. So you can solve your problem of uh, sexual harassment 
go and get therapy because it's your problem. It's not our problem. It's not our institutional problem. So this is uh, even a stronger effect, intersectional effect. For example, uh, people that have some kind of a different ability, sometimes uh, they already uh, tend to, um, people believe that if they have a partner, this partner have to be nice because how can a bad boy stay with a disabled girl? He have to be a nice person. So if you denounce that there is a kind of violence, that means that is your problem again. And on the same time, the construction of their subjectivity is constructed with a not a, a strong uh, by society. The, the self-esteem is not so strong. You cannot construct a very strong self-esteem. So it's they tend to think, oh, that's probably my responsibility for them because I'm not so good with people. So it's my fault. So this discourse this neoliberal discourse would make it even stronger, uh, this experience for uh, not normalized subject, okay? So how does the response or the intervention make it by institution in this uh, uh, ne ne neoliberal system? Uh, the first response uh, that is mainly in the Anglo-Saxon context is Surface in screening. Okay, let's check everywhere and that we control everything. And if there is something, we are checking it. And that's all. That's enough. You're looking, we are looking at you, and the big brother will save you. Everything else is not our responsibility. We don't need to change our culture, we don't need to change our institution. We just control and check. And again, we put the, the, the responsibility on subject. In the South of Europe, uh, we are mostly doing it through a, a later introduction of what we call protocol. So standardized procedure you have to follow. And one of the problem is that uh, uh, university think that uh, you put the protocol, but you don't have to acknowledge that there is violence in your university. So there is no transparency at all. And uh, the protocol have uh, a punitive uh, uh, approach. So they are trying to uh, show if there is a responsibility of the person that is, uh, is making the, the aggression and that they do not focus in all the other elements. So basically, it, there is this strange situation in which uh, the people that he scrutinizes is still the person that uh, is uh, denouncing, is reporting, because you have to prove that you really have been sexually harassed, okay? Uh, in Latin America context, uh, uh, the situation is uh, is a little bit different from what I, as far as I know, uh, they are uh, introducing protocol uh, lately, but uh, mostly uh, even for a strong, strong students uh, uh, fight, especially we are in contact with the Mexican colleagues uh, and uh, over there the feminists are, are quite high. And, uh, and students are, uh, feminist students are fighting a lot in order to uh, achieve the recognition of the problem within the university. So uh, all this, uh, this procedure, uh, all, both the screening and the protocol tend to dismiss uh, uh, intersectionality, intersectionality because this uh, way of uh, uh, working on things in this uh, path, strong path, and you have to follow it, tend to consider that uh, everybody has the same experience uh, and uh, they don't do difference between if the aggressor was your superior or was not. And that's extremely complex uh, uh, to recognize this, uh, to, recon to, to uh, give a response uh, adapt to uh, subject. So we, 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 that's why we still uh, 
focus on intersectionality and we want to make it strong because we think it's a powerful tool. But on the other side, we don't want to dismiss the materiality and we don't want to dismiss that we are in a nature of patriarchal society. So it's not that every subject because this neoliberal version of, uh, of intersectionality. So because we are all intersectional, everybody can suffer gender violence, gender related violence. Uh, there is no difference. There is difference still. Um, Another of the effect of this uh, process is that uh, there is this disempowering of the subject and the collective, both, both the, this, the subject and the collective. For one part, there is this, as I already said, this individualization of the problem. And, uh, um, and what we have to do is protecting you as minoritized subject, but protecting you Please stay, you, you have to stay home so that's you, you are not uh, incurring in any problem. We are protecting you, uh, reducing your liberty, okay? Uh, so as I said before, the burden of proof uh, in our protocol uh, all include the things that obviously we have to, to keep the, we have to uh, be sure there is no a false denounce, okay? False report, sorry. So, in other kind of uh, crime, you, there is not this importance given to the false uh, report. So why in gender violence is that? Obviously, it's, it's quite clear, okay? But a part of this, there is also this, uh, this question of uh, disempowering the collective. For example, uh, in, uh, we have in Spain different uh, uh, students, uh, feminist uh, students, uh, activist groups that have been reported to protest in a no politically correct way against sexual harassment. So, you did someone denounced sexual harassment, the university didn't help her to overcome the problem, uh, don't repair nothing, but if you make a scratch, for example, or make paint in the wall the name of the aggressor, you are the one in fail. Okay, so that's that's uh, one of the other effects of, of the policy we have. So uh, we need to shift the focus on the survival survival needing, and uh, to introduce uh, uh, what we have uh, Sarah Caliero have uh, named uh, uh, or used the word politics of care within the university also. Uh, I don't know, I think someone is writing, but I cannot read it. Uh, it it's someone saying good morning from Egypt. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> good morning. Shall we, shall we say another five minutes, Barbara? Will that yes, be enough? Yes, I'm, uh, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm arriving to, to the conclusion. Good. Yes, so within the, there's a shift to the focus on survival needing, okay? Uh, but being uh, aware that uh, uh, survive that care is uh, uh, is a double hedge sword of domination and resistance. So we have to also question marks if uh, beside the self defense group are the university the, a, neo a neoliberal environment really able to practice care in a way that is not becoming a uh, dominance uh, uh, of subjectivity again. That, that's uh, a question marks, okay? Mm. So the last uh, things we want to share is we analyze a different uh, survey in order to see if they were able to uh, think about, to recognize the intersectionality. And uh, we are still, finishing the analysis and the process of, uh, of making the new production of our, our proposal. But what we think is that uh, at least a three dimension have to be taken in care in a survey. Obviously the most um, common one is uh, to have information about the, the, how the aggressor and uh, the survivor can be uh, inscribed in different uh, uh, age of oppression, okay? But also we believe that is, it's, it's really important to difference between uh, the characteristics that are associated with the subject 
and the ones that are more contextual, like direct power, social power, and uh, even social pressure from the environment, the liberal environment, friends, family, culture, and whatever, in the expression of violence. We have to, we believe that we have to make to more question on this in order to understand how does gender violence operate in the university. And finally, uh, difference between uh, uh, what we have called the notion of act of or structuralities. The name is still uh, in draft. <laughs> we don't believe it's a very good one, but anyhow, uh, in uh, because uh, we we that we see that in sometimes uh, nowadays in survey at least in Spain we have more uh, male students that say that they feel that they have been sometimes. Uh, object of gender related violence than female. That's probably because uh, uh, they, we live, ex we experience so frequently gender related violence that uh, sometimes say, have you been sexualized? No, not more than normally. That's, that's, <laughs> it's like your, your, your husband beat you. No, not more than normally, just when I deserve it, you know? So, um, so how can we, broke these uh, these uh, these elements and uh, to reveal that that is still genderized gender related violence that it means that men cannot receive it but mostly from other men <laughs> so um so we we believe to that maybe we have to uh, uh inquiry of the persistence of the violence and the repetition of the violence and the affectation of the violence experience. And uh, if it had been used, knowing that it's going to have this affectation, for example, knowing that you uh, experiment fair and, and I want to produce this fair and not just to make a joke. Okay, and I, I'm using this in order to exercise this power. So these are just a few things we are thinking to to um, take in the in the account for the construction of our survey. So uh, we finished now. We want to thank you very much and uh, for the patience. And uh, you can have more information in the web page and uh, in all other places uh, in the internet, as you may know. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Barbara, for this fascinating presentation and the, the, this wonderful project that you've shared with us, which really uh, demonstrates the importance of thinking about definitions, uh, definitions of violences, uh, which uh, you're absolutely right, English doesn't allow us to think in terms of violences in the way that Spanish or, or French would for example, and so, you know, uh, it, it French would, would put a Nessa in the end. And so that in, in many ways, it really shows the importance of thinking about linguistic approaches as well, uh, because language hides a, multi a multitude of things as well. And also having shown the importance of um, an inter intersectional approach uh, to uh, uh, to uh, our uh, definitions and our research. And also, I think, I mean, it certainly is the case in my university, the reluctance of um, releasing data uh, 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 because they, and, and the, the obtrusiveness when you try, I mean, for many years when I worked on uh, equalities, I was, asking for figures to try and develop an intersectional approach and there was this dogged um, uh, refusal to do so under the pretense that they did not understand what I meant first and then saying oh the, the, the data is so small that it wouldn't be meaningful uh, which to me is an excuse for you know we don't want anyone to know <laughs> what to be and then and then now the obsession is to work on uh, on ethnicity, and it's about time that we do that. But then, what they don't want what they don't want us to do is to have a look at the data in terms of ethnicity and gender, ethnicity and disability, gender and disability. It's, it's absolutely fascinating. 
so it really shows the importance of your research. So thank you so much. Uh, so let's open the floor to questions. Um, would anyone like to start um, before I start to abuse chair's privilege? So I think we have a question from Alex. Um, Alex, you've put a question in the chat. Would you like to ask your questions? Put your microphone on and ask your questions. Your question. No? Okay, so I will read um, Alex, uh, Alexandra's question. Can you just clarify more examples of what you would include as examples of uh, gender violences? For example, would it relate to how the university recognised um, impact on staff students of domestic violence and whether or not this is recognised in performance reviews? or a non-recognition whether the academic staff student is expected to be resilient and perform the same as someone not experiencing or one in a more precarious position and recognizing reordering as a result of recognition of impact and how or who determines this. Oh, sorry, I've just realized that she doesn't want to speak. Um, okay, I, I'll try to answer, even if I'm not sure I will be able to answer completely, but uh, um, uh, talking about gender-related violence, about examples, okay, we are not, uh, we, we have not closed the definition of what we want to include, because we are still in this process, but uh, definitely, for example, the um, Gender violence survivors that go to the university, we have made uh, focus groups with them also because it's one of the things that the university uh, do not, at least here, do not recognize in their protocol. What I mean is that uh, uh, the protocols, the politics we have in the university is uh, on the um, violence that occurs within the university. But if, if it's outside, it seems that there is, they don't need special attention from university. So that, that's, that's a big problem and, uh, and we have uh, to rethink how to work about it uh, from a logic of care. Okay, so, so that that's definitely is. And uh, uh, in relation with, uh, with the obligatory of resilience uh, and how we affect to precariousness, and I don't think this will be something that we can include exactly in the survey, but it's something we are working on as a group presser, I mean. <laughs> in fact, for example, in the modification of the law of uh, machist violence, Catalan law of machist violence, uh, we have been able to suggest uh, um, the inclusion of uh, some kind of reparative action. Uh, so, for example, that uh, for teacher and staff that uh, have been experiencing gender-related violence within the university, the years that uh, uh, they experience this will account as if they have accomplished a high level of uh, of uh, academic performance, independently of, of what and what they have uh, exactly do. Okay, this is the idea they have included in in the in the in the legislation, but uh, it's still very new. So we didn't know how they will put in practice with uh, with clear politics. Mm. Let's we will still uh, stay there pushing and uh, we have a good news in this moment about the Catalan government. So we, we have a feminist uh, on uh, that was working in the university, uh, especially on these topics that is now in, in the government. So we hope that we will be able to push further in this sense. I don't know if this was exactly the question or if it's here, I want to suggest something else. 
Okay, well, okay, we'll leave it at that for now. We have another question from Wesam, who's asking if you can elaborate on the behavior or reaction of the women who are subject to violence. Would they report it or accept it? And he suspects this may be affected by culture. Um, okay. Uh, in the Spanish university, the reports are still very few. And especially are very few within the same system of the university. We don't have data, as, as you were saying, Nicole, there is a great resistance of, of, uh, of, uh, of having data, but we have interviewed many of the, of the person that bring this, uh, the office of, of assistance. So we know that few of them are there. Actually, the problem is that they, they are uh, believed yes, by the people that uh, accept the report, because normally uh, who is in charge of this are feminists within the university. But the problem is that then when this, the, the process starts, they lose control. And finally, the juridic service is the one that uh, define if you really have lived violence. And uh, in many cases, the results is that is not recognized, not a knowledge, or that even if it's a knowledge, the, uh, the compens there is no compensation for the person that had lived it, and that the penalty for the aggressor are very, very low because, uh, and they are lower as higher is his position within the university. So there is this double part. In fact, many of the people that uh, are working as attending survivor are now very frustrated because they work, they didn't have the effect that they would like to. Are there any penalties for the people who report violence? Sorry? Are there any pen for the for the people who report violence? Do they find whether or not their case is, is accepted and proved? Do they, uh, do they find that they are penalized in their progression, for example? Yes, in many cases, uh, we have different cases in Spain in which people have to have left the university directly because, for example, they were PhD students or precarious uh, teachers and they had to left university. Uh, people that are for administrative service that they tell to them, okay, we can change you from office, but you have to go in a lower position because um, the only available position is this one. Uh, so it's up to you, you choose, you can stay with your aggressor or we can save you and uh, you receive less salary and res less recognition. Uh, yes, that's quite common. And also not just that, but sometimes people uh, is also, not just the people that report, but people that work to help people that report, sometimes they also receive a, a report in itself. For example, we have a case in Madrid or uh, that now have been dismissed, but this person have been accused of being, uh, uh, of not protecting data, of doing things uh, badly and, uh, and, uh, and she stay for many months in uh, with the legal problems, and other people of uh, of uh, the team of the same university uh, have received it through many. Um, uh, ah, I cannot find the word, uh, not just accusation, but um, complaints, allegations. Uh, no, no, no. Threats. Uh, Rats. Say it in Rats. Spanish. Yeah. They have been treated of uh, of uh, being raped or being killed or Rats. we know where you live, uh, we know where your parents live. Oh uh, this one is not the official position of the university <laughs> that was more in, in the in the network. Yeah. Marion? 
Um, yes, I had a question and it's a bit of a recent <clears throat> observation and I wondered just if you had encountered this and had comments about it. It seems to me that a lot of kind of these new institutional policies and I'm thinking in particular about, for example, the dignity at work policy and things like that, that seem absolutely magnificent when you read them are becoming more and more for institutions covers to not actually address, you know, sexual misconducts or very, very serious issues and end up kind of protecting uh, perpetrators in a way. I, I think I've, I'm certainly starting to, I have started to witness this in the past few years and I just wondered if you uh, could comment on this, if you had the same impression. Absolutely. I mean, uh, um, it seems that uh, we already have this uh, path, we already have this protocol, we are um, respecting the legislation, you cannot blame us. So we are not doing anything else. That's, that's very strong. In, in a Spanish case, uh, most of the um, legislation or more the protocol or the documents, political documents that have been made within the university in this sense are effect of the UA regulation. So they, it was a way to uh, respect the UA regulation and mandate Mm, but not a way to commit. And yes, they definitely work in this way. And they also, uh, another thing we can see is that, for example, here, there is no resource. So people that, uh, that in the university is really fighting for uh, giving support to survivor, for example, they do it in between their teaching, uh, administrative uh, studying work is not they are not paid for it they don't have free time for doing it but they are just uh, using their personal time to do it and then the university say look we have amazing people that is working on this we put this resource now you are not putting the resource mm -hmm. we feminists are putting their time and their life in yeah. order so yes, absolutely. I, I think your last point is really, really important. In fact, because I mean, we all know that human resources are, are management resources rather than human resources. But I think this kind of increase of workloads impacts on even unions, local unions ability to have time for case workers to, to generally help people at all. And there's an overload for case workers in, in the UK and in, in, in local unions, in any case, that is generated by the university having a little bit of a tariff for them, but, <laughs> but um, you know, on paper, but in reality, no actual um, time provided. We even didn't have the local uh, union, uh, we don't have uh, like a uh, uh, union here with right. people. Uh, that can do this work so it's just uh, people yeah that. okay <laughs> so your question Marion ties in with another question on the on the chat from uh, from Alexandra uh, so I think they're fairly similar uh, Alexandra is writing uh, whether the choice in inverted commas because it's never a choice of uh, continuing working with an aggressor or being moved, so I suspect, you know, leaving the university is being used as a way for the university to cut costs, whether you think that's the case, Barbara, uh, as an opportunity rather than staying, uh, that, rather than taking the aggressor out. So whether the uni whether universities protect the aggressor in order to cut costs. Um, I don't know if it's in order to cut costs in, in here, it's not like in order to cut costs, but it's mostly in order to uh, maintain the guidance, because people, aggressors that have a high uh, status and level, generally are the ones that bring more money to the university. So you cannot touch this person because he's having a 
three European project uh, very well paid and uh, we need it. Or because uh, there is this uh, conservative things between uh, um, uh, cooperative uh, defense. For example, we had a case uh, in, a, in a department of law uh, in which uh, uh, most of the colleagues of the person that have exercised the violence uh, have worked on his defense and uh, find a filer in the procedure. And so it was completely dismissed, not because he have not done anything, but because there is a mistakes in a word that was pulled in the procedure, okay? So, um, and, and also we have a still a, a, some of the teaching and administrative personnel are um, officers, public officers. So the, lay of, the law of public officer is really protecting on their work. And in the case of students, uh, the legislation for Punish students is still of the Frankist uh, uh, epochs. So it's still a decision of the dictator and it talks about things about moral integrity or things like that and have no effect nowadays. Now we have a final question from Michaela. Um, Michaela, I think you're unmuted now. Thank you, yes. Uh, it's really not a question, it was just a comment, an after comment after Mariana was aware of time, we were about to, to finish. So I wanted just to thank you very much for the presentation and just to reiterate the fact that uh, when we talk about uh, policies being there to be inclusive, uh, to, you know, to address problems like, like, like this, are there not to address these problems? is exactly what Sarame said uh, or says about uh, the language of difference. The language of difference is implemented in university for uh, the practitioners uh, to be able to tick that box and to feel uh, at ease with themselves, to say, okay, we've done our, our work. We've done the work we were supposed to do, not to do the work. And exactly uh, this is what, what uh, we said yesterday with the language of excellence. Now that is the REF, the Research Excellence Framework of Teaching Excellence Framework in the UK. The language of excellence is there just to shine the university away from accusation of being racist or sexist because the language of excellence, there was a presentation yesterday by Lily who was here in the panel was exactly uh, that, uh, is just a way of protecting the institution from possible attacks. Yeah, so just, just a comment, not a question, really. That's All great. right. Thank you. Uh, now we have a final comment in the chat from Alexandra, going back to the uh, notion of resources. So it's not a question uh, and uh, just some insight where the hypothesis is uh, cutting costs might be there. Uh, as part of multiple logics, uh, so for everyone to read, um, uh, because it might be a way, uh, that's quite convincing really, it might be a way of avoiding court costs, for example, uh, so for everyone to read. Okay, and we've finished just on time. Okay, thank you so much, so much, Barbara, for, for this hard work, because we have grilled you with questions, and uh, this was an absolutely wonderful presentation. Very, very important research work. So we really look forward to uh, continuing looking at your publications and your work. And, uh, and we look forward to the next stage as well, because clearly, the, you know, there's a, this is going to go much further. So uh, looking forward to hearing from you um, and your future work. Thank you so much. Um, and we applaud you <laughs> very, very loud. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh